immediacy. It also makes it relevant. And this is a very relevant movie, Captain America. So Anthony and I just looked at the issues that were causing anxiety for us because we read a lot. And we're politically inclined, and a lot of that stuff had to do with civil liberties issues. Sure does. Drone strikes, the president's kill list, preemptive technology, all the themes that were worked into the film, working closely with screenwriters Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. It's a great film. It's not only great and fun entertainment, super special effects, as you would expect, but it does exactly what they said. It takes the current issues, puts them in the context of a political thriller, explains it to people. I mean, what can you can you say too much about a movie that where a character explains what compartmentalization is in one sentence, makes it very clear, and where they illustrate it throughout the movie, and where they even talk about Operation Paperclip. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Action and intelligence. We're going to be right back with your phone calls. Stay tuned. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet, the highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease? It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to Big Pharma. The fight against the New World Order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine if you're sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products. And get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. This is Alex Jones for InfoWarsLife.com. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. The new InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is the answer for you and your family. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Silver is so powerful that it is concentrated into a two ounce bottle and is not recommended for extended continual use. This is not a low grade formula. We are working with one of the top laboratory manufacturers in the United States to bring you the best form of colloidal silver using electrical processes within a base of deionized water for your preparedness storage or your home kitchen. Purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver today and find other amazing supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum 
potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com Coast to coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we were just talking before the break about this piece from NBC back in 2007 where they were so excited about biometrics, uh, the fact that the government would be able to go through and look at your face and do facial recognition and compare it to an ever-expanding database. Well, one of those ever-expanding databases, of course, is Facebook. Back in 2007, Facebook only had about 58 million views each month. It is now over one and a quarter billion each month. And that massive database has got a lot of facial pictures. So they've already got that database right there as well as the information that Google is tracking on us. But we had a caller call in at the break uh, from uh, Wisconsin talking about biometrics and cattle. We wanted to go to him and Dennis in Oregon and Chris in Indiana. We're going to get to you right after this, so stay tuned. But uh, Ben in Wisconsin, tell us about uh, how they're using biometrics for four-legged cattle. Yes, David, sir, you've been working really hard this past week. I'm Really grateful to be talking to you. I just had one of those epiphanies the, the, last night and got on with YouTube and was watching how these automatic cow systems work with 400 cattle. I mean, I used to milk 30 cattle when I was a, a kid, but can you imagine milking 400 and how they do it all with robotic work and that robots identify the cow and process that information to show just exactly what the cow's milk quality is and everything with that cow, what feed it needs and everything like that. It's just amazing. And it's biometric scans. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't have a problem when they do it to cattle. I have a problem when they treat us as cattle. And that's really what they're doing. I think they see us as their inventory. They see us as their cattle. And that's what they're doing this all for. They want to know everything, every little detail about us. It's obsessive. It's because they think they own us, isn't it? Well, if they own those cows and they're trying to get the most out of them, and that is the, the, the you, you can see how that, all that data they collected from that system to control the cows has turned to us. They just want to control us too, Dave. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what it is. We are their cattle. Well, thank you, Ben. Let's go to uh, Dennis in Oregon. You had something about uh, Oath Keepers. Go ahead. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, we were talking uh, two weeks ago, I think, and I got cut off in the middle um, of the technology. Yes, yes. Okay, and, uh, go ahead. You know, I was thinking maybe your technology you recognized my voice printer or something and decided it was too radical for this Alex Jones show. But uh, No, actually, our, we had problems with our phone system. Actually, it was last week. We, the entire thing went down just before okay. the, end of the end of the show. But go ahead. Tell us what you wanted to say. Sure. Well, I, I listened to um, Alex's interview with Stuart Rhodes uh, back in November last year. And he, he was talking about uh, they're going operational and setting up civilian civilization preservation teams. And so I just wanted to share uh, briefly and you know, just a, a little bit of detail on how, how we're doing that here in my neighborhood. Hopefully um, help uh, be an example to folks to see how easy it really is and um, how effective I think it's going to be as well. But I, uh, after the show, I, I got on their site and, and uh, found out who my local Oath Keepers guy was. I contacted him. And I found out from him that they're, they're, they're working with the existing organizations. Rather than reinventing the wheel, they want to work through uh, neighborhood watches and, and search and rescue groups. And so I, I decided, well, I can, you know, I can do a neighborhood watch. And so I called my uh, local um, neighborhood uh, policing officer in, in our county, and uh, she gave me two things. One, she gave me uh, a list of crimes that have been committed in uh, our precinct in the last year. And then, second, she sent out the neighborhood watch materials. And the thing that was interesting about those materials, they include not just things related to security, but they have a list of about 20 other things, uh, activities that a community can be involved with. And things, just things like fun and games, uh, community gardens. 
Well, let me, let me ask you this, Dennis. Uh, are you a former military or a police officer, or are you just uh, joining uh, Oath Keepers as, as in another capacity? Well, I didn't really join Oath Keepers. I, uh -huh. I, I kind of, I'm following their direction, and they directed me to the, the Neighborhood Watch. Because now, uh, the Civilization Preservation Teams, were those set up for... I thought that Oath Keepers was doing something to help train people who didn't have any training, who'd never been in the military, who'd never been in the police. Is is that the same thing, or is that something different? I think this is the same thing. It's just kind of on two different levels. You know, the, mm -hmm. the, the search and rescue is a little bit more advanced, perhaps, and then the neighborhood watch is just more for the average person. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's and, good. And, well, you know, I, I think people need to... They need to be aware of how they can help themselves, and they need to be aware of how they can help other people. And if Oath Keepers is putting people who have experience in search and rescue and uh, medical issues and, and stuff like that together with people who don't have that kind of training, that's really valuable. And I think yeah. it's very valuable and very imperative for people like Oath Keepers, for the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Associations. Both of them have the idea that people who have this training need to have the moral integrity to stand up for the Constitution. And we've seen a lot of, there's been a lot of movies about soldiers who have been misled and don't really understand what they're fighting for. I see that a lot with engineers, because I, I come at it not from a military or law enforcement background, but I come at it from an engin engineering background. And I know a lot of people who will go in and who will work for the military industrial complex simply because it's a paycheck or because it's very interesting work, never thinking about the moral implications of what it is that they're doing. So I think it's very important that, that we pull these things up. There's no organization <laughs> for engineers, I guess, but there certainly is for Oath Keepers. I think it's very important. I think it's what really stopped the Iron Curtain in East Germany. They got people who would no longer fire on their fellow citizens who were trying to go over the wall. I think that's a very, very important thing. And of course, Oath Keepers grew out of the unconstitutional attacks on our rights to keep and bear arms in the wake of Katrina. And we've seen legislation now introduced in at least two states to stop that from happening. And thank you, Dennis. Uh, let's give uh, Chris in Indiana a chance to uh, join in. Chris, you had something about uh, guns? Hello, Chris. Well, Chris is no longer there. I think we lost him. He hung on for a long time. You know, one of the things that came out today, or last couple of days on Drudge, was an article from Pat Buchanan. And he wrote, whose side is God on now? And it was a very interesting series of quotes. And he pointed out that the things that Vladimir Putin is saying is essentially appealing to Christianity, to civilization of Western values, and he's essentially taking that side while we've got a president who is taking exactly the opposite side. Let me read you a quote from Vladimir Putin. He said, many Euro-Atlantic countries have moved away from their roots, including Christian values. Polity policies are being pursued that place on the same level a multi-child family and a same-sex partnership, a faith in God and a belief in Satan. This is the path to degradation. And Pat Buchanan points out, he says, with Marxism-Leninism a dead faith, Putin is saying the new ideological struggle is between a debauched West led by the U.S. and a traditionalist world Russia that would, a, tra a traditionalist world that Russia would be proud to lead. And he points out that he's also tapping the worldwide revulsion of and the resistance to the sewage of a hedonistic secular culture and a social revolution coming out of the West. And of course, also the West's hegemony, spying on everyone. Now, right after the break, we're going to have a interview with uh, Ron Paul. This is Alex Jones had this interview with him earlier in the week. He's talking about a billion dollars from taxpayers that's going to be going to the Ukraine. And is it going to help the Ukrainian people or is it going to help the IMF and the bankers who oppress all of us? We're going to be right back with highlights from that interview with Alex Jones and Ron Paul. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.
chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. For a limited time, use the promo code 